Okay, we have breaking news. Uh, Lori Vallow Daybell has been indicted in Arizona for conspiracy to commit murder of Brandon Boudreaux, who is the nephew in law. Uh, let me just turn to our guests real quick. I mean, this case is the case that keeps on giving Gene Rossi now yet another indictment that's come down after a conviction. Uh, what are your thoughts? I think you have classic obstruction and witness tampering. I assume that uh, Brand nephew Brandon uh, was not killed. It was attempted murder. Uh, but it's probably allegedly that he knew too much. He knew where, no pun intended, he knew where the bodies were buried. Yeah, Julie, uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, by the way, about the conviction, we haven't had a time to talk about it and this latest development. I mean, the conviction, I think, was a long time coming. Um, I don't think anyone was surprised by it. I think it's interesting to imagine that there's going to be potentially another trial um, regarding her. Um, perhaps, you know, some might argue um, that money is better spent elsewhere, um, considering she's been convicted with the, the impossibility of her ever getting out. Um, but, but again, um, there's always an appeal aspect, so you never know what will happen. Um, but it, you know, she will remain in the news, I, I guess, for a long time to come. Yeah, Gene, I mean, the, the, the case has just really, uh, really hit a nerve with a lot of people in terms of watching the kind of lunacy of what went on here. What were your thoughts about the original conviction? Because I haven't, again, been able to speak to either of you two about this. Usually we're commiserating about these cases. Um, were you surprised by it? And uh, what general thoughts do you have about how the prosecutor and defense did in the case? Oh, I wasn't surprised one bit. I was surprised at how long the government put on its case because I think uh, this was, um, I didn't, never want to say slam dunk, but uh, it, it was very, very tough for the defense to defeat the charges. Uh, she, she did appear to be contrite. She had classic motive. She had her partner, Chad. There was money involved. Uh, I think this was her fourth, maybe fifth, husband, uh, just a lot of things that pointed against uh, her innocence. All right, I just want to go one, one last place, uh, Julie, just one last question. Uh, when, in the, you know, back in the day, and I'm, I'm, like at least my day, uh, when I was doing murder work as a baby prosecutor, there used to be a sentiment, and I'm, I'm not sure, and actually, Gene, I'd like you to kind of get into this as well, that if you had a solid, sustainable conviction in another jurisdiction, and there's a significant life sentence that's going to be imposed as to whether or not it made sense to continue to go forward with taxpayer dollars, resources. I worked in an extremely heavily active county uh, with lots of murder cases in the inventory. Do you think that at some point in time, Arizona may move for a plea agreement and maybe some sort of concurrent sentence? Or, as prosecutors could also think, you know, we got to worry about appeals in the other case. And so we're going for the boatload here and lock her in on another front, as it were. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was saying before is that, you know, you have this solid case. It can always be appealed. God forbid uh, the defense was successful on appeal. Then you at least have her on another case. If I were her, the question becomes, well, is she really going to plead guilty on another case or is she going to go to trial again? Uh, because in a sense, there's an argument to be made that she has absolutely nothing to lose. Um, but I do think that there is a sense of recognizing, you know, when money, taxpayer money needs to be paid for certain cases with the understanding there are multiple victims and victims want justice. Um, and sometimes just because someone's convicted on another case doesn't give justice to the victims on the third, fourth, or fifth case. Yeah, I know. People may find it odd. I can go back to the days where I was trying homicide cases again as a baby prosecutor where there were no victim witnesses, units. Uh, there was no contact to the family. Cases were tried. Plea offers were made. Uh, trials occurred with absolutely no impact. And now since that time, there have been victim crime bills, and the victims have a greater say to, to Julie's point. Uh, some of them may not care what happened anywhere else. They care about their particular victim, and prosecutors are definitely far more sensitive to, sensitive to that today than they were years ago. Okay.